So, um, you know, my first question, you know, after you, you graduated, you went through the process of, you know, signing with the Fever and also signing with the team in Italy. So can you kind of give me like a timeline of the events of, you know, signing and when you went where and everything? Okay, so um, first I got drafted on my 22nd birthday on April 17th. Um, I ended up getting waived by Indiana due to the, um, you know, COVID and everything. We didn't get to have training camp, so they had to make cuts early. And um, I got cut around May, May sometime, I want to say. And I ended up getting re-picked up by these guys in August. I went down to the Webble for about um, two weeks. Within that time span, though, uh, before I ended up signing with Indiana again, I signed to my team over in Italy. So um, it was a quick transaction for me with uh, hopping from the Webble down to Italy. So I've been in Italy ever since. OK, so tell me about your time in the bubble, you know, like on and off the court, you know, during the time last year during um, all the social injustice going on in the country. Plus, you know, going down as a rookie and breaking all of the records and making history like you were doing. Tell me about your time in the bubble. Um, it was amazing. It was literally the, the definition of dream come true. You know, I'm surrounded by the world's best basketball players. Um, my favorite teammates were amazing. They, they welcomed me with open arms. They helped me in literally everything I needed help in. Um, and it was just amazing to be a part of the social justice fight that we were putting up in that wobble. Um, if you ask me, the WNBA is definitely the top runner for um, the social justice stance this year. Mm -hmm. And um, the things that those ladies were doing um, from the shirts that we had made to the speeches that were before games, the national anthem, it was just it it was it was unreal to be a part of it. You know, I was watching it on TV a week ago and now I'm involved in it. So it, it was crazy. It was yeah. good. Yeah, it was nice watching that and being able to just see, you know, the impact that women can have on those yes. issues and stuff like that. Um, yes. so my next question, after you finished in the bubble and you moved to Italy, what was that like? Like making such a big move from, you know, come, being in the United States and then moving all the way to Italy? Um, I was nervous, you know. Uh, it was, I've been away from home. JMU was uh, four hours away from my home, but um, I traveled 16 hours to get here and, uh, you know, little jitter jitters for, for a rookie going overseas. Um, but, you know, my team and my coaches, they're very welcoming. They, um, they helped me. They pushed me in, in so many ways. Um, very good people that I'm involved with. So that definitely made the process and transition much easier. Um, and I've been living out here for the last five months and it's been good, you know, just doing my time. I can't wait to get back. I, so. I know. I was gonna ask. Um, when when are you coming back back stateside? Um, when is your um, season in Italy? Around mid April, I want to say okay. should be when I'm all said and done. So, I'll be here a total of eight months. Okay. Okay. That's nice. That's nice. Have you have you enjoyed it so far in Italy? Like, have you enjoyed your experience? You know, that whole like language barrier and maybe and things like that. Yeah, 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 it's been good. It's, it's very different, very right. different from right. the style of basketball to the living situations. It's different. Um, definitely an adjustment, but, you know, learning new things and um, seeing different parts of the world is always exciting. Mm -hmm. um, trying new things, you know, I'm out here eating different foods that I've never guessed I would probably try in my life. So it, it's really good. It's good. That's good. That's good. Um, you know, what was running through your mind when the Suns contacted you and, you know, said that they wanted to put you on a contract to come down for training camp? Oh, my gosh. My <laughs> heart was, like, fluttering. It was – it, it like, brought butterflies to my stomach in, like, the best way possible, you know. Um, Kurt Miller is the head coach of the Connecticut Sun, and he's, he's very good. I, I've heard nothing but great things about him. Um, his coaching style, the way he pushes his players, the belief that he has in his players. Um, it, it caught me, it caught me by surprise, you know. Uh, I had the chance to play again, to play with Dewana Bonner, Alyssa Thomas, some vets that know what it takes to win basketball games. So I was excited, I was nervous. It was definitely hard choosing between uh Connecticut and Indiana though. Right, right. Are you excited to go back? not necessarily home, but back to your home area, because I know you're from Philly. So is that exciting to go back to that area? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, 
it feels like I haven't seen my mom in like ages, my mom and my sister. So um, definitely excited to get back with them, connect with them for a little bit before I head to Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm just going to go out there and work. Mm-hmm. When, does, when does training camp start? April 25th is the set date for right now. Hopefully that doesn't change with COVID and everything. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. yeah. So what is your mindset going into training camp? Um, I know, you know, going from Italy, then trying to come back home and switching completely different teams. Um, you know, what's your mindset going in and what are you looking forward to the most? Um, just to go in there and be me, you know, I feel like um, I'm here for a reason. I'm going there for a reason. And I think that as long as I continue to stay true to myself, what I bring to the court, what I bring to people's lives outside the court, I think that um, I'll be, I'll be just fine. Um, it's definitely going to be another adjustment, you know, like you said, jumping from, Italy basketball back to American basketball is going to be a little shaky, but it's natural. Um, I'm just going to go out there and get my best shot. And I'm definitely looking forward to, to the learning experience. Like I said, um, working al- alongside our vets like Alyssa Thomas, Jasmine Thomas, Dewana Bonner, it's going to be good. So definitely just learning and taking in the knowledge. So what can you say has been um, maybe something you've learned the most coming, coming out of Italy and that you can take back to the WNBA in your your next season um mentally you can't let anything affect you in this game um and Italy the game is very physical they're much more handsy out much more handsy out here um and you just can't let you just can't let the little things bother you, you know you have to stay mentally tough through the whole 40 minutes of the game and just um push through the diversity you know if, if it get hard if it gets hard you know you pick your teammates up you don't um you don't look down on anybody. Uh, you stay prepared because at any point in time, any team can win on any night. Mm-hmm. Uh, give your best and just, you know, give each all. Right. right. So what player can, what player are you looking forward to the most playing with and then playing against when you, when you return back? Okay. The player I look most forward to playing against is Skylar Diggins. And I want to say that because my when I was in the bubbles first time, um, we played Mercury, mm-hmm. and for the majority of the game I guarded Diana Taurasi, and um, somehow, some way, I ended up getting mixed up with uh, Skylar Diggins, mm-hmm. and Sky was using ball screens, and man, she was tearing me up <laughs> in ball screens. When I say she was weaving through, hezzy and then going, so I'm looking forward to that challenge again. You know, stepping up and really locking in on the defensive end. Um, to play with, I it's it's a tie. It's hard because they have Dewana Bonner, Alyssa Thomas, and John Quell Jones, and those three right there is a powerhouse that I'm looking forward to just being involved with, listening to, watching closely, and learning from. So it's hard for me to pick one person. It's very hard for me. To pick one person. Right. Okay, I understand that. You know, being a, going to a powerhouse team like that, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun to be able to play with those with those vets like that. For sure. Um, my I, pro- I have a last question because I wanna wanna let you go. I know it's late over there, so I don't wanna hold you for too long. Um, what can you say JMU has contributed to, just in your life in general? Um, first JMU built me to be the absolute best version of myself that I could be, and I mean that off the court and on the court. Um, from my coaching staff, they taught me big lessons in this game of basketball. Um, not just skill-wise, but about the passion, the heart, uh, the time and the investment it takes to really be great in this sport. And I'm forever grateful for that. Outside of the court, um, just the maturity level. You know, um, JMU is a very good image. They push you in the classroom to do your very best. They make you think outside the box a lot, which is very important in everyday life. And, um, you know, just get out of my comfort zone. And I think that, that that was a big lesson for me, transitioning so much between the Wubble, between JMU, between Italy, just thinking outside the box and figuring out a way to get to your spot every time. Right. Okay. That, I, I really do thank you so much for, for this interview today. Um, yeah, I don't even know. Like, I'm just in awe right now. Um, I thank you so much. And I'm wishing you the best of luck when you thank head you. out to Connecticut. So thank, thank you so much. You so much. Thank you for having me.